Hey, hey, welcome or welcome back. It is, as always, good to see you. It's about 9.20 p.m. Monday evening. I just finished uh, streaming some Shadow Run to my channel and noticed Amberlynn uploaded a video. I was getting ready to go to bed, but I figure, what the heck, I can record this real quick. Her video is only 18 minutes long, depending on how much I have to say about it. But we do have a new video titled Weight Gain, Losing Mobility, and Relationship Update, Part 1. What do you mean, Part 1? Isn't this just, just like vlog number 11 or 12 or something? Starting some new bullshit series? I don't know what you're going to be updating. Is this the Amberlynn Can't Walk series because of her ankle? I wonder about this relationship update. Is she finally going to confirm that this is Jade all along? I don't know. Let's let's see what, what she has to say. Hey guys, so welcome to a new video. I figured we could do like a Q&A. We have a Twinkie story. Oh, doing a Q&A. Hey Twinkie. Best part of the video is a Twinkie. So we could do a Q&A type style. I don't like sitting like this for long. Um, I prefer to have my leg propped up with comfort because this hurts. <laughs> so yeah, so there might be like a part one, part two situation. I don't want to like be overbearing, but this is like, this is it for now. <laughs> like um, I might do some like what I eat today videos um, and things like that. I'm just hoping that the vlogs can come back soon. Um, it's officially been vlog? six days since I tore ligaments in my ankle. So it actually happened on Tuesday of last week at 10.40 p.m. And the reason why I know this is because as soon as it happened, I texted my girlfriend and I said, I think I broke my ankle because that's what I actually thought happened. Thankfully, it didn't happen. Although this feels a lot worse than when I did break my ankle when I was younger. But ligaments hurt. Um, yeah, tomorrow will be a week. Um, it takes weeks to heal, which is unfortunate. Um, it does. But yeah. Now let's get into the Q and A. So people are asking, what are my plans on keeping on track with like the weight loss while I am healing? So it's been a struggle. I'm not gonna lie. Um, during this time, I have had the most anxiety I've had. The Ozempic will still work though. The Ozempic will still limit her, uh, you know, slow down the food food going through her system and limit her appetite. The only thing is now she's gonna be more bored. She can't like get up and do stuff and she'll just be sitting around because she can't get up and move that much. So the boredom eating might come into effect. In a long time because it just it's a mind game because mentally I'm just like, damn, this is completely backtracking everything that I've been working so hard for. It hasn't. It hasn't backtracked a single thing. She can still lose weight. She's just going to have to watch what she's eating or at least not gain anything. And the Ozempic limiting her appetite should help with that. And I am full of anxiety, just riddled with anxiety. I have had breakdowns. Um, I have been bored. I have felt like, wow, what's the point? I have my food addiction, my binge eating just has been super prominent. Um, today is actually- Well, she can't really get up and go to the kitchen very easily to get food now, can she? my Ozempic injection that I'm going to do after this clip or after this uh, video um still on 0 0.50 so we're going to do that and see if that helps but I don't know like in the last few days like I've just been so hungry like it has been like emotionally it has been physically, it's just been it's been hard um obviously I don't really have an answer for this because right now I'm just kind of struggling I like feel hardcore guilty about it I haven't weighed myself because I physically can't even step on the scale because my scale is pretty plot yeah she can't get on the scale that's understandable but she shouldn't feel guilty in my opinion just because I mean not being able to walk around and move it's gonna take a hit you, you know you're it's gonna take a hit what's it what is the antecedent to that pronoun? Your your self-esteem, your motivation is going to take a hit. Um, I mean, she can still do like sitting down exercises and move her arms around and stuff. And she can take this time to write. You know, play Mario Party, read. 
formed um, and it kind of wibble wobbles. So I do not trust myself to step on that currently. Plus I know it'll hurt. Someone asked, have you thought about doing water Blurry. aerobics for exercise? See, if I had my own personal pool, let's do it queen. Cause Blurry. I love swimming. I love everything about being in the water, but unfortunately I don't do public pools because they gross me out. Anyone and everyone can tell me, well, chlorine kills the pee. Chlorine kills the germs. I don't care. <laughs> Something about swimming, which with a bunch of people, like in a pool together, it's just like a people soup. And it really just like creeps me out. Someone asked, do you think it's normal to compare spraining an ankle and temporar temporarily losing mobility to mourning the loss of a person? So I was like confused with this question because I didn't really know um, what they were talking about. But I did say, I think on Instagram where it just feels like I'm in a mourning stage. And Clearly, this person doesn't realize that mourning can mean more than just like mourning someone's death. And thankfully, someone left a comment underneath this that kind of explains it perfectly. Mourning doesn't have to mean that. I've heard people say they mourn the life they could have had. They mourn their marriage after divorce. To mourn means there is a loss somewhere and Amber is scared that she's losing her mobility, hence the mourning. You're making it sound like she's comparing it to a death of a loved one, which isn't true. So I want to say thank you so much, Kia Jones, for that comment because you explained it better than I probably could have in this moment. I wasn't comparing it <laughs> to the death of a loved one at all. I'm just saying I feel like I'm mourning the mobility that I have worked so freaking hard for. And now it's just like it's backtracking. I do use like a little cane moment. Ugh. So it says the capacity of this is 300 pounds. I'm glad. Yeah. Hope she doesn't break it. But I'm glad she has something to kind of help take the weight off her ankle while she's walking. So I've been using this for like five days now. Uh, okay, maybe not five days. How long has it been? Like three, four? I think it's been four days. It's fine. It's dandy. I'm not putting all my weight on it. It's just like helping as like something that's there. And it, it just feels really good because like I can't like walk without having just like a little bit of support. Um, like people with crutches, they would do the same thing. So that's just like, it's helped a lot, honestly. Someone asked, what would you say are some of your struggles as an adult as a direct result of your traumatic childhood? Definitely my issues with food. Well, the binge eating, um, My memory sure. problems, 100%. Like, I used to think, like, I was just this, like, dumb little duckling, you know, in this world. But no, traumatic things that happen to you as a child really messes with your brain as an adult, obviously. Like, the brain chemistry and, like, a lot of random things happen from that. And memory for me is a big one. So I find myself being told that I'm lying a lot or contradicting myself a lot, which is a super struggle because it's like, that's not what I'm trying to do here. It's just like memory relapses. Well, she does contradict herself a lot and she does miss, you, you know, word things poorly. But if something, I mean, maybe she's trying to say that she could just not remember things correctly. So when she retells something again, it's off. I think that might be a bit of a stretch. I don't know enough behind the psychology of childhood trauma and how it affects some of these things to say one way or the other. I would have to do some research. Mm, but I don't, I don't know about this one. Me not being able to trust people, like massive paranoia. Like I, I'm a very paranoid person. I know like me being bipolar, me being bipolar also is kind of like- it Yeah, I don't trust too easily either. Runs in the family, honestly, but you know, like depression. I just feel like a lot of my bad things about myself or things about myself that I want to change. Um, those are definitely from my traumatic childhood for sure and it just like kind of breaks my heart when people are like super cruel when it comes to these things because it's like okay yeah you're being cruel to me as a 30 year old woman but it's like you're also being cruel to that seven-year-old girl who had to witness the things that she did so as i'm editing this i usually sometimes think of other things that i didn't voice during the original reaction but you'll see my facial expression change here in a second but this whole well, if you're making fun of me now, then you're making fun of seven-year-old me, and that's just not right. I don't agree with that. I mean, again, I don't know enough about the psychology behind what can happen to your brain chemistry and things and everything due to childhood trauma. But this sounds like kind of a cop-out to me for Amberlynn to be like, well, if you're making fun of some of the stupid shit that I do and say now, you're making fun of me when I was seven years old. No, no, we're not. Whenever we call out some of the stupid things you say, like whenever you're like, potassio, spita, spita, whenever you just said the word correctly, like two seconds before, 
No, that is all you as an adult just either playing stupid or having a brain fart or something or trying to be cutesy for, for wifey. So this is kind of an, another one of the, well, if you do this, then you're a shitty person. Like whenever she said that reaction channels, if they react to her injury to that video, then that's shitty of us because people are making money off that. Well, I don't make money off my channel, but it's public content that she's put out there. I mean, she hasn't said before, like, well, hey, I do this because of my childhood trauma, so please don't make fun of X, Y, or Z. But a lot of the stuff that she's done, that's all adult Amberlynn, in my opinion. Anyway, get back to the video here. Um, I didn't choose my childhood at all. Um, unfortunately, well, I didn't choose not. brain chemistry that was created because of it. All I can do is work on the now and the things that I can change. And unfortunately, brain chemistry is hard to change. Um, I'm taking medicine, going to therapy and things like that. And I'm just like, I'm working on it, but it's it's hard. It's not something that you can just change. Sometimes it takes literally years, decades, um, but I'm trying to figure it out for sure. How have you been managing your sleep schedule while recovering from your ankle injury? Sleep and healing are very connected. Make sure to get lots of rest if you can. Honestly, my sleeping, it, I, I go to bed later now because I know from experience that if I stay in bed all day long and then it's time to go to bed, my brain like doesn't adapt. It's like, okay, you've been here all day. What do you mean? This is your bed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, girl, it's my bed. Like I want to sleep. So me being in bed for you know, all day long, my brain, when it is time to sleep, because I've always had problems with sleeping. I have insomnia. I wonder if she could get up and go to her desk and like put something in front of her to prop her leg up on. Since she does have a standing desk, she can, she can adjust the height of it to make space across from her to prop her leg up on something. Ever since I was a very little girl, that's something else from my childhood. Like I'm kind of afraid to sleep at night. It's uh, very psychological. It's frustrating. Um, and I know it's from trauma and things I experienced at the nighttime um, as a younger person. Yeah, I noticed that I'm able to fall asleep quicker, if you will, mm -hmm. on normal days when I'm up doing my life, doing my daily life. And then I physically go into my bed to go to sleep. My brain is able to process, okay, well, this is this is where you this sleep. This is time for bed. But currently it's like, okay, this is where you are all the time. So yeah, I just noticed my sleeping's a little bit worse. Like I go to bed later, I wake up later and I kind of low-key hate it. Um, I still am trying to take melatonin, which sometimes doesn't work or as good as I'd like it to. So my sleeping has kind of been a mess. I'm sure you guys can tell because I'm up like constantly on Instagram answering questions. Oh, and BT dubs. Um, I'm doing a book read along. I don't really know if I should call it a book club. Hold on. Let me adjust my ankles. Hurting. <laughs> Instagram, I'm doing a um, book read along moment. It's hard to call it a book club. It's not going to be like conducted like one currently, but we are reading the seller by make a discord and only invite certain people. And do you like discord meetings? Oh my God. I forgot what it's called. I will put a photo here, but this is what we're reading. Um, there is trigger warnings for it. So definitely look those up. But we are, as a community, going to start reading this book on the 24th. So I'm going to try to have this video say, up. Does that say a Wattpad sensation? Before. Maybe Amberlynn's Hello Darling can become a Wattpad sensation. Or then, so you guys know and you can read along. So on Instagram, I'm going to set like goals, like be at this page by said date. So then as a community, I can ask you guys questions about it and we can kind of like discuss it through my story on Instagram. Just start a freaking Discord. It's, it's more so like a read along, let's discuss it type of deal. Um, so yeah, you guys should definitely join that's what a book that. club is has this injury given you more motivation to lose the weight it has made me realize more than anything that people my size like you're screwed if something like this happens because they don't have casts that are going to fit someone with my type mm -hmm. of lipedema you know you don't have the body strength to use crutches um this has completely made it's kind of in a way it feels like a version of what could be said as a rock bottom I'm just finding that my rational side, which is... I think rock bottom would be completely unable to move. She's still able to walk. It just hurts a whole hell of a lot. Oh, goodness. Sorry, right. that's a bad face to pause on. Berlin, you have reached a point where it's like, okay, if cancer wasn't it, is this it? Like, 
are you going to lose the weight quicker now? Like I've lost a hundred pounds in a year. So we need to like celebrate that. Yeah, good job like we're kind that, of not, yeah. we're kind of skipping over the fact that I have lost a large chunk of weight. I have lost one fourth of what I, my goal is to lose. And that's 25%. I feel like that's a lot of weight, like in a year, especially. It is a lot of weight in a year. Um, okay. So there's my rational side versus my mentally ill side, if you will, my eating disorder side, where it's just like, all I can think about is food. I just want food because I'm, I'm bored and I'm sad and I need something to make me feel better. So it's like, I have these two sides that are currently fighting just back and forth with each other. And sometimes the side wins and sometimes the side wins. It kind of feels like the angel and the devil on your shoulder type deal. And I hate it, but this has made me realize more than ever, honestly, like girl, like, Oh, is Twinkie having a nightmare? Hold on. Baby. Aww. Baby. Sometimes she'll like do these little <laughs> like in her sleep. It makes me feel like she's having a nightmare or something. I don't like it. It makes me Aww, sad. Um, I totally forgot what I was talking about. What I'm trying to say is this is making me want to lose weight more than ever because if something like this ever happens again, I want to be able to help myself a little bit more because right now I just feel like I kind of can't. Like I'm doing the best that I can, honestly. But I'm amazed she was able to get herself back up and get back to the apartment, honestly, after she fell. Sometimes the best that you can isn't always the best that you need. Does that make sense? Someone said, how does it feel to know the honeymoon is over and to realize what a grave mistake you made dragging a stranger into your home? Uh, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> I'm so confused. Are you saying that my girlfriend and I aren't in the honeymoon phase anymore? Because we are. Um, it's so It's so strange to me because I've never had like such beautiful love like this before like the chemistry just like the connection like emotionally and physically and mentally like I this is this is gonna be very very weird but I think if you know you know it's one of those things so I'm about to explain it and if you don't know then you're gonna think that I'm freaking psychotic but if you know you know type thing so when I'm on TikTok right I was on lesbian TikTok for like a freaking hot minute there because like hi lesbian and so Are these you girls lesbian? would always like you know, just be super sweet. And like, they would be like super like mouth to mouth like this, like barely touching, like just whispering in each other's mouths or like, um, mouthing or singing like super sweet lyrics together. And I've never had that with somebody ever. And it would bring such a sadness to me, even while in like relationships in the past, like it would bring such a sadness to me. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm here in a relationship. I'm supposed to be loved, but I don't have that with someone. I don't have that intimacy because in my opinion, that's like hardcore intimacy. Um, that's just how I feel to feel finish. super safe and comfortable enough to be vulnerable like that and in my opinion that's like a vulnerability I don't really know how to explain it like I said if you know you know so when I would see those TikToks like I would just feel like automatically like just like this like sadness this like heartbreak and I finally found someone that I'm able to do those things with I am able to fall asleep with her face right next to mine I that's like so special to me in a way that that I I can't quite explain um which is fine because it's definitely one of those situations where it's like, if you know, you know, because when you see TikToks like that and you scroll in the comments, people are like, I can't wait to find this level of love. I can't wait to find this level of intimacy. I can't wait to find someone I could do this with. Because to me, that is just like, it's a level of love that not everyone has just like that, that intimacy. And that's just kind of an example or just a small example of like a bigger picture of what I mean. Um, but every day with my girlfriend, we love each other more. Our connection gets stronger. We get more comfortable with each other, especially me on my end. Like, it's so hard for me to get comfortable with somebody. Obviously, like it took so long for her to like see my legs in person because it's something I'm super self-conscious about. And now it's like, if I ever feel sad about my legs, she'll kiss them. She'll, she'll give a little kiss. Like, it's just an intimacy thing and a connection and a chemistry thing. I have never had it's not me talking about it but my exes that's just me sharing my experience as a human being i just simply have never had this with someone um so i think every relationship has different levels of of this sort of thing some people just don't express themselves in that way of being like super close to someone you know whispering words into each other's mouth um but i think every relationship is different but i think when you do know that you found someone that you want to be with, you know. But sometimes it might take a little bit of time to get into that, I think. Um, I mean, I don't know if this 
immediate connection or love at first sight. I don't know if that exists. Um, I'm also very cynical and jaded in my old age. I don't know if love really exists to be anymore to begin with. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, relationships do take a little bit of work and sometimes you just, you have to get to know someone a little bit first. You know, some people don't experience the attraction to someone until they've got to see their personality or got to know them. And then they experience a romantic attraction. Um, but I don't know what the what the hell do I know? I've been single for three years now, over three years. And before that, probably I think it was like four or five. So what the hell do I know? Clearly, the person who asked this, they want me to be regretful and finding true love i don't understand true you guys love. like a lot of you want me to be like unhappy in my relationship a lot of you want me to stay fat it's a lot it's weird um i can see past the condescending tone trust me i i could see your guys's passive aggressiveness like i'm not stupid and it's funny because the person who wrote that is actually an old woman so i'm sorry you're a very bitter old woman <laughs> i'm a bitter old woman but maybe that's just a profile picture it may not be who it is. The pain. And I wish nothing but the best for you. Um, I think it's time you need to find some love because if you're happy and if you have love in your life, if you're giving it, receiving it, you just wouldn't ask things like that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't leave comments like that. It's just not a thing. Like, I don't know if maybe you're correlating like my ankle issue with like the honeymoon phase. I don't know what's going on, but either way, this has not dampened our relationship. If anything, it's made it stronger. And I, I, did you want me unhappy? I don't know. Like, I think that's what you want. So it's like more entertaining show for you, but it ain't happened to this. I have an ankle injury. Cool. But I have the most amazing relationship I've ever been in. And I can say that with my chest. So. Anyways, I, I knew this was going to get kind of like heated in some points because that's just how it goes. You know, the comments under my anything is is always just pretty vile. Um, it's a phenomenon, if you will. But I'm going to end this. I'm sure I could answer way more. But I, I do want to ice my ankle here a little bit and just rest up a little bit because this is not comfortable. <laughs> so I do hope that you guys enjoyed and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a part two. If you guys don't mind, um, maybe we could spill a little tea or we could, I don't know. We'll see. Depends on what you guys ask me. Anyways, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. So while we're doing this Q&A video, I also just want to address something that came up um, in one of her Instagram, Instagram questions that I saw uh, pertaining to the lump under her arm. Um, here's what she said in her video about that. And also I have this really like weird lump under this arm. It's like not even visible. Like it's like under my skin. And sometimes it makes my arm like swollen and red and like super hot. So my doctor is like, okay, we need to schedule you to get an ultrasound just to see like what it could be. So we're gonna do some imaging. So we're getting that. Um Yeah, so the way she worded that under my arm, I thought it was her armpit. I mean, isn't that what you would think if she said it's under my arm? Here's what she said about it whenever somebody asked her about it on Instagram. You mentioned you had a lump near your armpit. Did you get it checked? She says, I don't have a lump near my armpit. It's on my arm, a little higher than my wrist. That wasn't clear at all in what she said about her, her lump in the arm. Uh, so she said, under my arm. That makes people think up under the armpit because that is a place where women... <clears throat> can get lumps if they have a possible benign tumor or something when it comes to breast cancer. So I know a lot of people probably, including myself, when she ended this video with something bad happened to me the day after this, uh, but I'll be okay. I thought it had something to do with this lump that maybe she went and had it, you know, had the MRI or had it scanned or whatever and got bad news. Um, so the timing of that was a little weird. It turns out, you know, she did hurt her ankle, as we find. But, yeah, again, her wording, the way she words things is very misleading. And then she has to come back and clarify stuff. So here is the information about the lump in her arm, apparently. I don't think she's had it scanned yet, but here's where it actually is. 
She's not going to spill any freaking tea. We all know that. But hey, she answered a few questions. I honestly can't even really remember what most of the questions were because they were so just inconsequential, really. Uh, you know, hey, I'm happy she's in a loving relationship. I'm sure her weight loss will be okay. Uh, if not, it's just a small bump in this little road. She'll be fine. Um, I mean, again, there isn't a whole lot she can do with her content right now since she isn't really very mobile. So she'll probably keep doing these Q&As. Um, she might do a live stream, who knows. But that's really all we got. So until next time, be safe and take care.